So this week's Love Fly podcast, we welcome Laurie Nasso from Air Canada. Welcome, Laurie. How are Hello, you? Paul. Thank you for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, likewise, we are too. We're really keen to hear about your story and a little bit about your uh, nickname as well. Oh, yes. And your whisperer, <laughs> you know, so we want to hear about all of this. But yeah, welcome. Tell us. So tell us about yourself, Laurie. Thank you. you. Um, I've been a flight attendant for a very long time. Um, I started flying in 1995 with a charter company. Mm -hmm. um, got great training there, um, ex ward air managers, so really great training. And uh, in uh, the year of 2000, I was lucky enough to be hired by um, our national carrier, Air Canada. Mm -hmm. And I've been with them ever since. And um, so, yeah, I've been flying for for a while now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so you, you, you worked your way up, I'm assuming. Um, what sort of uh, routes are you doing? Uh, well, that's a great thing about the career of flying. Uh, it, you know, you have the um, the chance to change your flying to meet your needs. Mm -hmm. um so you know when my children were younger I was doing day trips where I would leave in the morning come home at night um but I uh, then transitioned over to overseas uh which is wonderful because I get to see all parts of the world and I get to meet all kinds of interesting people so so yeah so right now I'm doing overseas um unfortunately I did Tel Aviv for several years. Mm. Uh, that was my regular route. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we are not flying there at the moment. Yes. Um, so I um, am doing other destinations. So I'm I'm literally trying new destinations for the first time after so many years of flying. So it's great. That's yeah. great. So if you if I was to push you then, do you have like a favorite sort of couple of destinations that you just love going to uh okay so uh i mean i loved tel aviv <clears throat> i love that for several reasons uh just feel a sense of peace and calm ironically when i would land there uh, i love the food i love the people uh, i love the fact that there are many different religions there yes um gosh uh zurich i am loving uh, I get to visit my family when I go to Zurich, so that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, I tried Japan for the first time. That was very, very interesting. Mm. That was that was fantastic, actually. Completely out of my element, but took the train and went to go see a temple and, you know, tried different little restaurants on my own. So that was wonderful. Yes. Um, you know, everywhere is beautiful because, Everything has something to offer. Uh, I've been to London many times, thankfully. And, you know, with London, of course, you have shopping and you have museums mm -hmm. and you have royalty. So everywhere has something beautiful yes. to offer. Do yes. I have a favorite? I mean, I used to tell passengers when, when they would ask me that when I was just doing my day trips, they would say to me, oh, what's your favorite destination? And this is when I was just doing the day trips and my children were still young. And I would say my favorite destination and I would give them my home address. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. But, you know, uh, they're they're a little older now. So I'm starting to, you know, uh, branch out a little bit. But honestly, I've been to Amsterdam. I've been so, so since, you know, again, I keep saying, unfortunately, since we've stopped flying mm -hmm. to Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, I've visited Amsterdam. I've been to Copenhagen. I've been to you know, Japan, as I said, um, just traveling every I've been to Spain, a few places in Spain. So every everywhere has something beautiful to offer if our eyes are open. Yes. Right? Oh, I love that for the eyes that are open. Yeah. I like that. Yes, yeah, good. Yeah. So what made you go into becoming crew in the first place? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Um, oh, gosh, my father. I hope my father's not listening. Um, you know, I was on track, believe it or not, uh, in university. I was studying criminology. I I was thinking I would become a criminal lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, obviously, you know, we can uh, see a really clear link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but I, I worked in the field for a little bit, meaning I worked with victim services, Metro Police. I worked with uh, young offenders. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I worked in legal aid and I thought I was going to save the world at the, at the young age of 23 after graduating. And I quickly realized that wasn't happening. Okay. Uh, so from there, I, after I graduated, I went on a trip to Mexico and I was offered a job at a hotel and I was to dance and I was to teach aerobics. And so I loved doing all of that. So I left everything much to my father's chagrin and I left everything and went to live in Mexico for a year. And when I was done with that lifestyle, because it was very long days mm. from morning to night, uh, I came home and I said, okay, what are my skills? What do I like? What do I want to do? And I came up with flight attendant. Okay. Uh, because I love to travel. I love speaking to mm. people. Mm -hmm. I love talking in general. I just talk and I don't even need coffee to talk. I just keep talking and entertaining. It's just, you know, it's just, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, so I became, I, I, I applied to every airline that we had in Canada. And the first one that took me, I just went. Mm -hmm. I did, I was still young. Um, I think naive is a, is a good word to use. And so the first airline that hired me was called Sky Service. They are no longer around, charter okay. company, uh, yes. and um, didn't pay very much, but mm. I did see a lot of the world with them. And then after five years of being with them, uh, a young man that worked with Sky Service, his contract was not renewed. And he begged me to go to the Air Canada. They called it back then a cattle call, where uh, it was in a hotel and literally thousands of people in there trying to get hired by yes you know the national carrier and so I didn't think anything of it because I was very comfortable where I was mm. I got roots because I spoke Italian French and Spanish and um I just accompanied him I put on a little skirt a black top put my hair in a ponytail just like it is now and I really didn't have any desire to leave where I was because I was comfortable uh, but I went to the interview and I got hired and he did not. Eek. Yes. So here I am uh, 24 years later, uh, absolutely loving the company I work for, loving my career. Yes. Uh, it gives me so much flexibility. Mm -hmm. I've gone back to school, I think, four or five times while I have been a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got married, I got separated, I had kids, um, but I'm in a good place now. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Oh, you've, yeah. you, you're really, really embracing it, aren't you? So it sounds like you love the travel side of it. That's clear. You Very like much. talking to people. Yes. And uh, But I'm also, there's this other, this whole other side to you. You're obviously keen to keep learning and... and Yes. Oh, and there's thing about helping people as well, isn't there? So tell Yes. I don't want to get there too quick, but I just think there, you know, the reason we're talking is because you, this this passenger whisper thing, and I'm thinking, oh, this is really interesting. <laughs> so tell, tell us how so, that came about. <laughs> yeah, so I will start by saying, um, you know, my dad has given me my work ethic. Um, I am definitely a workhorse. Mm. I rarely sit still, so I, I got that from my dad. Um, but from my late mother. Um, who was an absolute angel on this earth. Um, mm. I got my empathetic nature. Um, the patience that she had, I have yet to meet a person as patient as my mom. Wow. I'm trying to get to her level. <laughs> she sounds um, remarkable. She was incredible. She was an incredible human being. Um, so I get all of that. I have to credit her. Mm. And even when she was alive, I would tell her, thank mm. God I'm half of you. Oh. Because if I was all my father, the temper is, <laughs> is there as well. However, having yes. had children, mm. uh, that has brought my temper in check or I'd like to think it's been brought in check <laughs> mm. Thank mm. my son's no longer in the room but um in terms of caring for people I mean I don't think you can be a good flight attendant if you don't care for people 
Mm. And I would say 99.9% uh, .9 of the flight attendants that I have worked with mm. are caring people. Yes. Um, it's just always been my nature. Uh, growing up, I always had friends come to me for advice. You know, I, I, even though I haven't been older than them, I may have been the same age or maybe just a bit older, uh, mm. always for advice. And so I guess I have the gift of giving good advice. I have, I definitely have the gift of being able to put myself in other people's shoes. Even if I haven't been in their shoes, yes. I have a gift. Mm. Uh, everyone has a gift. We all have gifts. It's not just me that has a gift or this gift. We all have gifts. Uh, it's just a matter of time. And it's a matter of acknowledging what our gift is and then putting it to use. Mm. Uh, one of the uh, times that I went back to school was to become a holistic nutritionist. Okay. And there I really, really embraced that we all have gifts. And my gift is to put myself in other people's shoes and to help them as much as I can. So yesterday or the day before I was at work and um, obviously some of my flight attendant friends have, you know, noticed or noted that, uh, you know, the thing that happened in July, which I will talk about with a passenger went viral. And so they're, they're chuckling and, you know, snickering, calling me, oh, there she is, the hand holder. <laughs> and uh, I think that if I were to write a book, and I am seriously contemplating that, mm. um, it would be titled The Hand Holder, because I do tend to hold people's hands in life. It's where I'm comfortable. It's where I feel I am strong. And I will admit, uh, during my separation, I feel like I lost a little bit of that, mm. uh, my marital separation. But it's all coming back, and it's coming back stronger than it was before. So, so do you want me to talk about July? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they're just. I mean, what I'm getting a sense of is this: how much you care about what you do, and you, and you can't. Very much. And the fact that, you know, you've been doing it a, a long time now, uh, respectfully, yes. and you're still smiling. You still talk about it passionately, and I think. Anybody listening to this who's a nervous flyer would think, oh, I hope I get Laurie on my flight or somebody uh, like her, you know. <laughs> yes. Well, there are many of us that are very passionate about our jobs mm. even years later. And that's why you do see the 65-year-olds who are still flying. Yes. Because we do care. Um, so, um, so in July, uh, my mom had passed away in April and it was sudden. Mm. Uh, so it was very, very difficult. It's still difficult. Yes. But uh, in July, I had a flight to Zurich. So I knew that I was going to be seeing family. Yeah. Um, so that's always comforting to be around family who uh, cares about you, right? Mm. Uh, so I, and I typically do work in business class. I've kind of transitioned to working in business class. I like the details. I'm also very detail oriented, uh, not OCD anymore, but you know, okay, very no, no judgment, <laughs> <laughs> very detail oriented. The napkin has to be placed just so. And speaking of that, is my Rondo facing the wrong right way? Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, okay. so we'll look, we're looking good. You're okay. Carry on. <laughs> Sharp. <laughs> That's the ward air training I had at Sky Service. So, um, so I had transitioned to working business class, but on this day, uh, I was working in economy class, which is also great. I don't mind economy. I don't mind business. I treat everybody the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was in economy class and I was seated at doors three. And so at doors three, I have uh, three seats directly in front of me and then three seats in the center. And then off to the other side, there are three seats. And so directly in front of me, the three seats were empty. And then the middle seats, I had a woman sitting there by herself. Um, I was near the boarding door um, when she came on and she was crying when she came on. And so of course, I'm going to ask her if everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And she just said that she was frightened to fly. And I said, okay, you know, don't worry, we'll take care of you, you know. Um, but I didn't know 
exactly where she was seated. I knew she was going towards the back. I just kind of intercepted her as she was coming down the aisle. But I said, don't wear, worry, we will take care of you because I was going to find her regardless. 400 people, 500 people, however many people are on the flight, we're going to find her, we're going to take care of her. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just so happened she was seated in front of me. And um, I don't believe in any coincidences. Anybody who knows me knows that. Coincidences are just God's way of being anonymous. That's that's my opinion. That's my belief. That's how I've all, always rolled. So she was seated, uh, not directly in front of me, but the seat closest to me uh, that was uh, occupied. And uh, so she was shaking. She was crying. She she just could not calm down. She she just her hands were sh shaking and yeah. just uncontrollably and so I said you know so I you know like you know you speak to anybody right like we're all humans right if someone's in business and they're super elite or if someone's in economy class and it's their first flight or it, it doesn't matter we are mm -hmm. all humans we all mm -hmm. have bones we all have flesh we all have blood all the same nobody has gold running through their veins nobody has you know uh, uh sewage running through their veins we're all the same. So um, I just started speaking to her and just trying to find out a little bit about her, you know, and, you know, part of, part of that is distraction, mm. right? Um, I know uh, when I've been in a, I've had three dental sur gum surgeries and petrified, petrified. Yes. And I know that my dentist and his assistant talked to me to distract me yes. right uh i know that sometimes when i have little little you know um panic attacks of my own because i'm not perfect and i'm you know i'm just like everybody else mm. my son will come and start talking to me about something you know mommy do you remember that time we went here and we had so much fun completely to distract me i know what he's doing but yes. it's working and it works so that's <laughs> what i'm doing with this woman Mm. Right? So I'm just trying to distract her and also to get a little to get to know her a little bit. Right. Where is she coming from? Where is she going? Where has she been? How can we help this lady out? So it turns out that she was flying to Zurich to go to Tel Aviv okay. because she had a parent who was dying. Mm. Well, no coincidence. Tel Aviv was my regular route. I just picked that flight up as an extra to go see my family. So Tel Aviv is my regular route. Of course, I'm going to relate to her. Yes. Uh, she has a dying parent. My mom had just passed away not long ago. I love Tel Aviv. I love the people. I love everything about it. She was from there. So, and, and then, you know, I started using, uh, I try to learn like, hello, please, thank you. Uh, in every language, wherever I go, mm. um, I have the French, Italian, Spanish under my belt. But, you know, in Hebrew, I learned how to say a few things, too. So I said a couple of words to her in Hebrew. And and so she was very, very, very grateful. And she was very thankful. So I thought, OK, I've calmed her down. She's OK. She's good. Oh, yeah. Right. But um, but no, um, on takeoff, <laughs> um, uh she really, I, I she, she looked like she was going into convulsions. Mm. Uh, it was quite serious. Um, it was quite serious, actually. It, it was, it was, you know, I can joke around, I can laugh, I can make people, you know, smile and stuff. But this, this was very serious. In my mind, I thought, oh boy, we're going to have a little medical here if, uh, if action isn't taken right away. And as flight attendants, all of us are trained equally uh, with first aid. Uh, some of us are nurses, some of us are doctors. I am not. Um, I'm just a passenger whisperer. Um, so uh, I I made a decision. Uh, I, I got out of my jump seat and I sat in the seat still close to my door so that I could operate my door if there was an emergency. All of this is going through my mind, mm -hmm. right? Because on takeoff, we have a protocol. We have, we're not just sitting there thinking about our nails or, you know, thinking about, you know, what am I going to do on the layover? That's not what we're doing. We uh, have a protocol to go through in our mind. And I take that very, very seriously when it comes to uh, work. I, again, I, I like to cross all my T's, dot all my I's. 
I take, I take it seriously. You know, mm. I take my career seriously. Mm. Uh, and so the protocol is going through my mind, but I'm also thinking about this woman. Are we going to have a medical with her on takeoff? Mm. Not, not, not the greatest timing. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to scoop right. Uh, you know, the seat that was closest to her, there's still an aisle between us. I'm still able to reach my door if there is an emergency. Um, and so I just, I just grabbed her hand and I said, I'm going to hold your hand. We're going to get through this. And so I just held her hand for takeoff. And for that time, I like to think she was calm. Mm -hmm. uh, she stopped shaking. She stopped yeah. crying. And, uh, and she was, she was calm. And that's, that was my goal. I, I didn't want her, <laughs> I didn't want to have a medical emergency um, on takeoff. Um, and then little, you know, I didn't realize the family behind. So it was a mom, a dad, and then two daughters in their, they look like, look to be in their twenties, which I now know they are in their twenties. Mm -hmm. uh, the mom photographed the hand holding. And uh, she decided to uh, put it on her Twitter account. And uh, she is a professor from the University of British Columbia. So I guess, I guess with that, uh, people noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, when I landed in Zurich, uh, well, first of all, during the flight, we all took care of her. We all kept uh, the passenger. We all kept checking on her, which is normal. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I... I you know, people have congratulated me and stuff. And first and foremost, thank you. But it's not really something to be congratulated for. Uh, it's, you know, we do it every day. And I say we, we flight attendants do it every day. And yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, uh, promote Air Canada because that's the company I work for. I think it's the best airline in Canada. I'm just going to keep saying that. Um, but of course, there are flight attendants that work at other companies, of course, that are going to be doing the same thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I will say that we all took care of her during the flight. Um, when we landed in Zurich, uh, my family picked me up and, you know, I, I went, I went off with my family and so on. And I always speak to my children. It uh, doesn't matter where I am in the world. I, I speak to them, let them know I'm safe, let them know, you know, uh, ask about their school day, their tests, et cetera, uh, because I still want to be, you know, mom as much as I can, whether I'm on the yeah. ground or in the air or wherever I yeah. am. Anyhow, my daughter's 13. I have 13-year-old uh, twins. And my daughter says, mom, you're viral. <laughs> and I said, what? You know, I'm 53. I know nothing like technology is not my jam at all. Zero. I know Facebook. I know Instagram. Um, that's about it. Uh, yes. I, I'm, I know how to check my emails, uh, but that's that's about it. So when she said I went viral, I had no clue what that meant at all. <laughs> I, I'm like, no, mommy doesn't have a virus. I, I'm fine. I'm not. Sick. I'm Don't need to lie it. down. What does it mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then she explained to me what it meant. And and so yeah, so then um, different uh, news companies, uh, stations, I guess, they had contacted me mm. to talk about this. And uh, and that that's it. Uh, the lady that took the picture, her name is Celeste. Um, we ended up connecting, I, I guess, on Twitter and then now Facebook and now Instagram and and I do, I have had some layovers in Vancouver. She's invited me out for coffee. I haven't been able to meet up with her because yeah. the timing hasn't worked, mm -hmm. but uh, we will meet up one day. Uh, she's a, a really wonderful human being. Um, she's just, she's very fun and she's very gracious. She's yeah. very humble uh, and she has a great family. And um, so I, I'm very happy to have met her. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, the lady that I held hands with, uh, she had an unusual first name. I remember that about her, mm. um, but I didn't go look her name up or I didn't. And I have, um, I have since I've met her, I have looked people's names up, which I guess we shouldn't technically be doing. Um, and I have done it, um, and I've contacted them to make sure they're okay. So, um, 
I have, I was in Israel when the bombings started mm. and you can imagine the stories I have from passengers on the flight home from that. Yeah, yeah. So I have contacted a couple of those people on my own. Um, I just had a gentleman on a Dublin flight. Uh, again, we don't meet people by accident. I don't believe in coincidences. Uh, I was working uh, economy class. I had gone up to business class to uh, just assist with the pickup, uh, cleaning up of dishes and whatnot. And for whatever reason, no coincidences, this gentleman kind of looked like you actually, Paul. Mm -hmm. um, he had a beautiful uh, bright green sweater on and the shirt he had on underneath was blue with green and his eyes were uh blue and so I just complimented him again I give compliments to men to women to children I'm not trying to pick anybody up or I'm not trying you know I've I've done it with women so I, you know and just it's just again that's that was my mom mm -hmm. uh I remember when I would go into the house with a new pair of boots or whatever she, oh that's a little nice you know she would say to me so, but anyways, this gentleman, uh, anyways, uh, I just complimented him. And then I said, uh, did someone pick that out for you? Or did you do that all by yourself? And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, he kind of broke down a little bit and it was his late wife who had just passed away two months ago. And so again, we connected. Yeah. So I've reached out to him, uh, just, you know, it, you know, just to say it was nice to meet him. And uh, just to know that, uh, you know, his wife is always with him. I, again, here's something I probably shouldn't do on air, but I wear this angel pin, which technically I'm not allowed to be wearing, but I do wear it. Um, uh, and, and this is my mom. And I was going to take it off and give it to him, but he didn't accept it. So yeah. I just, I just let him know that, you know, um, his wife is with him everywhere he goes. And so I just spoke to him about signs and, and so on and so forth. So, yeah. So I, I, I don't, the, the point of all that is I, is I did not get the ladies uh, first and last. I mean, she had an unusual first name, but I didn't go to look up her last name and whatnot. I was satisfied that she was okay um, yes. because she had stopped shaking and, and stopped mm -hmm. crying, you know, and, uh, and that, that was my goal. So, and Oh, so she, she, and I gave her some advice, which was, you know, any nervous flyer. Uh, so she was advised to do Toronto, Zurich, Zurich, Tel Aviv, uh, so that she didn't have to do it all uh, in one um, flight. And I said, no, no, you want one takeoff, one landing. <laughs> I Not agree. Takeoffs <laughs> and two landings. Yes. Because now you've got to go through that all again. Mm. After you've waited in an airport in Zurich where you know no one, you've never been, and now you've got to try to find your way to your gate, then board a plane, and then go through the whole takeoff and landing again. Nice. So for the nervous flyers, do it all in one shot. Mm. Right? So I, um, yeah, yeah, So so that was that. I agree. I mean, that's that's a fabulous story, you know. And why do you think it? I mean, it, it sounds like something. This is that you do all the time. This is could have been any day that, that you did do. this. Yes. But yes. why do you think it went viral? Um, I think I think there are a few reasons. I think because first and foremost, being you know the national carrier, Air Canada is in the eye mm. of the media at all times uh i believe the company is being scrutinized for every single solitary move it makes and doesn't yeah. make yes um so you know lost baggage uh delayed flights anything and everything that goes wrong is mm. is out there for everyone to see uh, and I think with this being a story that's, you know, I think it's a pleasant story, a happy story, a good ending, uh, you know, it's refreshing, right? Yes. Yes. So I think first and foremost, Air Canada is in the eye of the media. That's that's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And then I think secondly, I think 
most people, because there were some comments uh, still with her tweet that were not positive, they were negative. Um, I think most people, especially after COVID, after there was no airplane in the air for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think for most people, it, it was, you know, uh, a good shift in energy. They're ready for some positivity, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so well, I'd like to think that anyways. Well, I mean, obviously, I think that was the case because it did go, as my daughter told me, viral. So yes, yeah, well, not a virus, not a no. virus. It went viral. <laughs> <laughs> now we know what it means. Virus. <laughs> Mommy's okay. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, mom. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yes. Like, yeah. you, if you've got teenagers or uh, young people near you, they just spend their time rolling their eyes, don't they? Oh God. Yes. Why don't you yes. understand this? You know. That's okay. That's all right. That's okay. But my children know they 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 are fully adapted to the fact that I don't know much about technology. We went to a Japanese restaurant last night, um, invited uh, dad to come along. My son was accepted to a high school that was difficult to get into. So let's celebrate with a dinner. And mm. uh, they come out with these tablets. And I think, I'm not doing this. So my children already know, hand it to dad, you know? So that's what we did and, and that's fine. It all worked out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we ate a lot. <laughs> is the end for you know fact it's great <laughs> oh I, I just think i love those stories and and, and i think anybody listening be thinking wow I, I want you know i want laurie the angel on my flight you know so wow. the passenger whisperer thing how did how did that nickname come about honestly um i was speaking with uh is it john please help me out is it john mm -hmm. yes so i was uh i was emailing back and forth with john about being a guest uh, on your podcast. And we were just, you know, uh, emailing back and forth to try and get a time that fit. And then I don't even know, uh, I signed off as the passenger whisperer. And he said, he said to me, he said, you better be careful because that name might stick. <laughs> and then uh, and then I shared that um, I'm thinking about writing a book because mm. uh, I've been through uh a lot in life I think mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us have but not all of us write about it um, but one of my strengths is writing uh, one of my escapes my whole life has been writing um, you know some people go to drugs and alcohol and partying to escape a life that might be a little challenging for that period mm -hmm. and what I've always done to be very honest is the gym the forest and the library. Uh, so uh, writing is is something I always is my go to. Uh, nice. And so with John, I shared that I might write a book, and then he said, "Well, you better be careful; that name just might stick." <laughs> and then further to that, uh, the other day I was working with a good friend of mine, and so a couple of the girls came on chuckling, "Oh, it's the hand holder! It's the hand holder!" <laughs> and um, and then I said, no, actually, it's the passenger whisperer. Mm -hmm. so, then, <laughs> so then I started chatting with this friend of mine. Uh, we worked together up front. And uh, she said, you know, she said, the book can be called The Hand Holder because it seems that throughout your life, you've held people's mm -hmm. hands in mm -hmm. different scenarios. And then a chapter can be the passenger whisperer and then just talk about the flying experiences. And so I would mention this woman uh, in July on the Zurich flight, I would mention this gentleman with the green sweater. And, uh, and then I have one or two other, <laughs> uh, one or two other. Uh, yes, I bet you examples. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, well, that's it. So you, we're going to hold you to that. Now. So when you, um, when you release the book, you'll have to come back and tell us about it so that yes. people can buy it and, and read your stories. Yes, and uh, yes, yeah, so that's it. You, you've got an accountability partner now, which is love flight. Yes. Thank you. And I need that. So that's good. Very mm. good. Thank yeah. you. Well, I think when when good people like you are doing stuff like you do, it's important to, that others know about it. And so, you know, we're delighted to get you onto the podcast to, to talk Thank about you. your stories and stuff and, and all the help that you do. And Thank um, you. So one of the things that I always ask people who have got sort of technical training like you've got as well is um, what advice you would give to 
nervous flyers? How, you know, because you must see a lot of them. How, how do you find yes. the best way to help them? Yes. So rule one, I brought my little notepad. Ooh. Um, so I will share um, one of the painful parts in my life was going through separation and mm. having to go to court uh, many times. Um a few years ago and each time I was brought to court I had my little notepad and I would write while the lawyers would be speaking to one another while the judge was speaking I would write and I would write and write and write and I would write things like God is good I would write things like I love my children I would write things like you are a wonderful mother so affirmations yeah. And so what I recommend, as silly as it may sound, if you're a nervous flyer, um, is to bring a notepad with you or a beautiful journal. Mm. Um, because my close friends know that I like to write for my 50th birthday, my good friend Sandra gave me a beautiful notebook and I write in it. So I, one of the things I would mention to or advise uh, a nervous flyer is to bring a notepad a notebook, uh, mm. a journal, and just write on takeoff, write on landing, write during turbulence. You know, I am safe. I am looking forward to my vac vacation. Um, I am enjoying my flight. Anything along those lines, affirmations, positive, um, positive mm. notes to yourself. Mm. Um, and what, what? if you're not... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to ask you, why do you think that helps you or uh, could help others? Affirmations, writing. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, I, I want to say his name is Dr. Robert Mead, but I I think his name is Dr. Robert Mead. Uh, so university was a long time ago. <laughs> Over 25 years ago. So, um, but uh, anyways, there are many theories out there about, um, you know, uh, affirmations, self-fulfilling prophecies, um, you know, what we write, what we, what we write is, is what we end up believing, what we say to ourselves, mm. how we speak to ourselves is what we end up believing. That's half the battle. Mm. That's half the battle. If you keep telling yourself so myself, for example, with this, with, with trying to get onto this, this podcast. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was sweating bullets. Like I do every single solitary zoom meeting, every single one, I start off with sweating bullets. And then I tell myself, you can do this. You're mm. capable of doing this. And mm. I calm myself down. So oh. If I were to keep going along the path of, I can't do it, I can't do it, oh my God, I'm stupid, I don't know what to do. I don't, that's what I'm going to end up believing. And that's what's going to end up happening. Mm. But when you put a positive spin on it, when you start saying, no, I can do it. No, I'm not afraid to fly. No, I am going to get there safely. I am going to watch the flight attendants. I am okay. I'm going on a beautiful vacation. Look at me. I'm sitting in business class. Look at me. I am in economy class surrounded by great people. Maybe I'll meet someone. <laughs> and those would be the things to write down. Mm. Right? And I mean, this might be a generational thing, but but my daughter's only 13 and she does get it. So um, I know for younger generation, pen to paper might not necessarily be as um, powerful. That's where mm -hmm. I'm going to use powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, for, maybe for the younger generation, uh, you know, the, I don't know what that thing is called that they use with their phones, the little, what's that called? You know that thing that they tap on their phone. It's like a pen, but it's a oh yeah yeah like a, yeah like a stylus. But no, oh um... the stylus, yes, let's the stylus. So I don't know if for a younger generation, the stylus, mm -hmm. the phone, or the iPad or the laptop is more powerful. But whatever form of writing works for you, that's what I would be doing. Yeah, 
Okay. okay. So that's my, that's my first piece of advice. Love that. Yeah. Great. <laughs> my second piece of advice is to have something that is um, meaningful to you, close to you. So mm. this is not allowed, the angel pin, but this is mom and she comes with me. <laughs> so uh, anything. I, I've seen children bring stuffed animals with them. Yeah. I've seen adults or teenagers bring pillows with them. Um, again, this my niece gave to me after my mother passed away. I don't know if you could see it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what it is, is a little stone and it's, it, and it says, um, worry angel on the, on it. And it's just a little stone. It's just a little angel stone and, you know, just rubbing it, just holding it. You know something of that that is of meaning to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing uh, that uh, I you know would be of meaning maybe. Again, I wear this. Again, I'm not supposed to. I'm going to get fired by Air Canada <laughs> by the end of this podcast. Um, is, a, is a little cross. Uh, and and there are times again when I was in court. All those times, I mm -hmm. would just you know squeeze the cross, squeeze the cross, right. Uh, so anything that is is meaningful to you, whatever that is, you know, and, and keep it in your pocket or keep it close to your heart uh, or squeeze it. You know, if it's a stuffed animal or if it's a pillow, mm -hmm. something that is of meaning, bring that with you. You're allowed. You're allowed. Um, uh, at one point, we were uh, allowing emotional support uh, pets to come on board. Mm. Um not too sure. I, I I believe that that is not no longer the case. But even a photo of your pet that brings you joy that would work. Again, yeah. something of meaning. If it's you know if you are traveling, let's say without your spouse, uh, bring a photo of your spouse and hold that close to your heart. Right. So nice. that would be the other thing. So bring something. Okay. okay, we like these tips. So the interest, Don't bring the kitchen different. sink. Don't bring the kitchen sink. It might not fit in the overhead bin. Yeah. But I bought, I bought it for sentimental reasons. <laughs> right? Um, okay, so my next tip is going to be, let's see, I did write them down. Obvious, well, okay, it's obvious to me. Mm -hmm. Deep breaths. Mm -hmm. Deep breaths. Close your eyes, breathe in through your nose for 10 seconds, out through your mouth for 10 seconds in and out, in and out, until you feel a little calmer, mm. just a little calmer. Mm. It might, you know, like, because when we get anxiety, I've had anxiety in the past. Yes. Uh, when we get anxiety, I think we, I think many people have, I don't know how many people admit it, but I do. Um, you know, you start breathing rapidly, your heart Indeed. starts beating quickly. So how are we going to ourselves control that? Mm. Deep breathing bring it down calm nice. yeah nice. you know i had an in charge when i first started flying he was wonderful mauro sicoli was his name and he would always he was wise he was so wise I, I was only 25 and he was in his 50s and he would always say lower your center hmm. lower your center he was so calm he walked with such grace um and that's what he would always say hmm. you know if someone would start panicking lower your, and you do this with intent lower your center so just kind of bring it down right so that's something we can control ourselves our breathing yeah like that thank you um so <laughs> i'm gonna put this out there too because i'm catholic i'm gonna say uh you know say a little prayer um and so uh, obviously not everyone is catholic and i don't want to get into a whole religious debate here but you know uh whoever whoever you know uh you worship uh, even if it's the universe, uh, you know, put it out there to the universe, to God, to Allah, to uh, who else is there? Help me out. <laughs> I don't know them all. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just just put it out there to whoever, whatever you worship. Right. Please, please be with me. Please make mm. me safe. Please keep me safe. Right. Uh, mm. So you can write that or say that. Close your eyes and uh, whatever. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, I've got a great one, which is what this lady did when she came on. Um, so that lady that came on in July, she came, she, she told me, I asked her and she told me she's afraid to fly. 
tell your flight attendants. <laughs> tell them. Share the story. Because we're not mind readers. Some of us are passenger whisperers, but we're not mind of readers. Of course. Yes. Right? So in all seriousness, <clears throat> tell, tell your flight attendant because I'm going to say 9.9 .9 times out of 10, mm. we're going to air and we are going to do everything to keep you calm. Yes. Right? Not all of us are going to hold hands and, and that's understandable, right? Like, but we all have our methods of calming people down. Mm. So tell your flight attendant and, uh, and we'll come and check on you. We need to know. That's why we're there. We're not just there for coffee and tea service. That's not why we're there. We are also there, you know, in emergency situations, first aid situations, and we're also there to make your flight as comfortable as possible. So if you are anxious and sitting on pins and needles, looking like me in a dentist chair while I'm gripping, you know, the arm mm. wrap, um, we're going to change that for you if we can. And 9.9 yeah. .9 times out of 10, we want to do it. Right. I okay. once had a passenger um, and he was gripping the armrests because we were going through some moderate turbulence. He was gripping and his knuckles were turning white mm. and it was turning white. And so I went up to him. Uh, actually, I was seated next to him because when there is turbulence, we we sit and fasten our seatbelts. And so I was close by and I said, oh my gosh, I said, you look just like me when I go to the dentist having, you know, surgery. I said, I'm, my knuckles turn white too. So he started to laugh. Again, there's that distraction, right? Yeah. yeah. So anyways, uh, so tell your flight mm -hmm. attendant, right? Yeah. So that we know. And then what we would do is we inform the whole crew and then that way, you know, we're all on board and we're all going to check in on you, right? So, so do that. Um, the other thing, uh, I mean, it's better to do before takeoff than after landing is if if time permits uh, and depending on, you know, uh, the flight crew, um, to be fair to them, they have a lot of work to do before takeoff. But mm -hmm. if time permits uh, and if someone is extremely anxious, a little trip to the flight deck, yes. of course, everything has to go through channels, uh, you know, uh, pilots have to be um again have the time and mm. be able uh you know visit the flight deck uh and that way you know you've met the people behind yeah. the controls right um and the other thing i did have uh it was december i did have a situation um it was my second uh let's call it a, a preparation for an abnormal landing um uh, where there were some issues with uh, sense within the, the the cabin, and so some some passengers were commenting, and so another flight attendant actually said this, uh, and so I thought, oh yeah, that's true. So I'm going to use this line from now on, and now we're going to share it uh, with Love Fly uh, podcast listeners, uh, pilots have families too mm. so they are going to do everything in their power uh to get an aircraft on the ground as safely and as quickly as possible should anything abnormal happen yes they have families at home too mm. they can be safe too so they're not going to jeopardize their lives yeah. right so yeah. and 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 they and I I will say this very confidently in all my years of fam of flying, I have not met a single solitary pilot who is not um, very uh, responsible. Um, some I I I have felt that they are more responsible than others. They are very. They take care of people. Mm. You know, they they have that responsibility. They know their duty. Yes. Captain of a sinking ship, they're the last ones to go off, right? Mm. And pilots are no different. Mm. Um, they are no different. Uh, so just keep in mind that 
pilots are not going to jeopardize their lives. So if they're not going to jeopardize, jeopardize their life, they're not going to jeopardize your life. They are no. there to do a job and they do it diligently. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I have met some that are much more uh, dutiful than others, but all in all, I, I can honestly say that I haven't met any that uh, are irresponsible. So no, gonna... I agree. I agree. They're a very responsible bunch, aren't they? Yes, yes. I um, I flew last year or the year before to Chile, and I didn't know that I had bro uh, broken my foot. And so I was flying with this terrible, terrible pain because the hospital doctors said to, it was just plantar fasciitis, which it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so I was limping severely, but because no one said it was a broken foot, I, I went to work. And again, there's my father's work ethic, go to work. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went to work and I was limping severely. And this one captain from Montreal, I will never forget him. He said, you look like you're in pain. He said, give me your bags. And again, we're not doing anything to go anywhere with one another. Uh, he was married. I'm happily separated. Uh, so he carried my bags all the way from the point of landing in the airport all the way to my room, left the bag at my room. The next uh, day when we left to go back to Toronto, took my bags all throughout the airport. And again, there's nothing between us. Uh, he strictly cared about his crew member uh, yeah. who was in agony so um yeah so i'd like to say that about pilots just know just have confidence in the pilots and if mm. time permits go and meet them you know ask if you can you know take a peek in just explain again explain communicate to yes. uh, the flight crew the the flight attendants that uh you have a terrible fear of flying and and uh it would it be possible just to say hello to the pilots to help mm. calm your nerves mm. right there's right. nothing wrong with that. yeah great Right. Yeah. Um, okay. What else you got? <laughs> what else did I write down? Okay. Um, you know, because I am a trained holistic nutritionist, mm -hmm. I, I like calming teas. So Tulsi tea, T U L S is in Sam I, or holy basil tea is a calming tea that doesn't mm. put you to sleep like chamomile is meant to put you to sleep. Um, Tulsi tea, bring a couple of uh, packages. We are happy to get you hot water. Uh, no troubles there. It's absolutely free. And sip on that during the flight. You can drink it hot. You can drink it cold. My favorite flavor is the rose. Uh, but, you know, it comes in all different flavors. And I know in London, because I pick it up in London often, mm -hmm. uh, uh, traditional, uh, I think it has the, the word traditional in the brand of tea i know it's not a typical london tea um but it but it's it's a it's a good brand and uh in all seriousness holy basil tea or tulsi tea is, is okay it's something right. to consider bringing on board yeah right? nice. yeah hot water is free everything's free <laughs> <laughs> no actually it's not but <laughs> hand holding um, hot water all free yes <laughs> um so the other thing is to if you can travel with a friend, travel with a partner, right? Travel with someone who's going to keep you calm, hold their hand, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you can, bringing someone with you is always a great idea, right? Mm -hmm. That's just, I mean, <clears throat> if it's possible, bring yes. a friend, bring, bring a family member, that's always good. Um, what else did I write down here? You've got loads, this is great. Yes, I came prepared. You did, yeah. <laughs> Crossing the teeth. Details, I get it, the details. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, this is one that I'm I'm not particularly fond of, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, in severe cases, uh, my cousin's wife, uh, she used to be petrified to fly. Right. Petrified. Uh, so she used to take medication prescribed by a doctor. Mm. Uh, it's not my favorite piece of advice uh not my favorite piece of advice but if if you are going to follow that route um please don't order any alcohol no. please let us know that you're taking medication mm. because the alcohol and the medication not a good mix yes. and it's a serious thing 
So not my favorite piece of advice, but if you're that petrified, mm. ask your doctor for something. Uh, when I go for MRIs, I've been for a million, unfortunately, I have to take uh, medication. If I don't take medication, I'm not going in that that tube. It's not yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I take the medication to go into the tube, yeah. right? Um, this cousin's wife of mine, by the way, both of her children have since moved from Ontario to um, Alberta, which means she has to fly to see them. Yes. Guess how many times she's gone. So they moved there, I think, last year. Let's say last year. I, I Don't quote me on the exact timing. Last year, let's just say. And they have grandchildren. Guess how many times she's gone. Go ahead. I don't know. I, don't, I, I see she's either once, never, or every week. I can't decide. She's gone. I, I don't even know how many. She's gone so many times. She hops on the plane and she goes because <laughs> she has a reason to go now. It has to, yeah. No yeah, medication. No desire. Yes. No medication. So, so overcoming the fear of flying is possible, right? Mm. Yeah. So just and, and and tell yourself that if you are a nervous flying flyer, overcoming the fear is possible, just right. like any fear. Mm. Overcoming it is possible. Yeah. See, you heard it there from Laurie. So. <laughs> it most definitely is. Yeah. yeah. I was petrified, petrified. I was going to lose my children. That didn't happen. Mm. I had that fear. I had it. I had it ingrained in me, but it didn't happen. So fear, you can face everything and run, right? Yeah. Or not. Yeah. False right? evidence appearing real is the other one people sometimes exactly, say. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So you can overcome the fear. What else yeah. did I read? What else did this I This is read? great. <laughs> let's settle in for our second hour come on <laughs> i told you i talk a lot are we out of time oh no no you got plenty of time we've we done oh. an hour keep going what else you got <laughs> i'm so sorry i told you um, i talk a lot and i haven't had any coffee yet that's all right yeah I, i've had coffee and i've you know i've barely got a word in edgeways which is the is my perfect podcast i say hardly anything you speak that's so sorry. perfect for me I'm no it's sorry. great please don't apologize <laughs> No okay, need. so we did the deep breaths in the writing pad. We did the prayer. Oh, oh my gosh, yes. So that I meant to say that earlier. So when you're speaking to the flight attendants, so, so we're letting the flight attendant know, but also all throughout the flight, watch your flight attendants. If your flight attendants are calm, what does that mean? Mm. You should be calm too, or you can be calm too. Even in that abnormal uh, landing situation I had in December, we were all, granted, we were all over 20 years seniority. But I'm going to tell you, everything that we practice every year, we train every year mm. for such emergencies, everything we practice went just so. Everything went by the book. <laughs> so, we were all calm. Passengers were all calm. Uh, so watch your flight attendants. Okay, that's 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 the key. Nice, right? Yeah. So that's that's an important key. Watch your flight attendants. We are there for you. We are there for you to calm you down. We are there to give you a comfortable experience. Apart from, like I said. Yes, we serve the, the drinks, we serve yeah. the meats, we're there yeah. for emergency, we're there for first aid. But there's that human factor, and we can't forget about the human factor. No, that's right. And, and if you're lucky, you might even get the hand-holding passenger whisper. You just never know. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, I think the calming tea travel with a friend brings some. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, oh, oh yes, so I did mention the pets. Um, I know at one point we did have emotional support pets on board. Uh, at mm -hmm. this time, they are not allowed. But um, like I said, bring the photo uh, of the pet if that's someone or something that calms you down. Bring that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's that's what I've got to share. <laughs> oh, Laurie, it's been great. I mean, so I mean, this there's been lots of there's been lots of lovely, lovely nuggets in there. 
and Thank you. Uh, and just your whole uh, presentation and everything is there's something very calming and helpful and kind. I hope so. I yeah, hope so. yeah, it really comes across. So what, what next for you then? What yes, yeah, so you've got the potential book. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to keep flying mm -hmm. for as long as my body allows me to fly. Um, I'm going to keep traveling with my children because yeah. I love making memories with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to get started on writing this book. Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I say, when you do. You Hopefully I don't home. get fired from Air Canada before that, though. <laughs> my necklace. Yeah, all this, all my this contraband you're wearing, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, I gosh. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I think that they've. I, I'd imagine they. You're the last person they want to get rid of with the amount that you do. So you, you're such a great ambassador for all of them, and thank I'd you. imagine any company would be proud to have you. So thank you for all you do. You. Just amazing, and some, and really fabulous, reassuring tips for anybody who's listening. And, um, and I think you probably just increased the sales of Air Canada as well. So that's you know, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's been lovely to meet you. Thank you very much. It's been very nice to meet you as well.